Good evening, I'm Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona. Thank you so much for joining us for this Facebook Live discussion. We're talking all about back pain tonight, and I know there are probably many sufferers out there with back pain, myself included, with a, a bulge disc. I'm so happy to be joined by Dan Fisher. He's a physical therapist. He's also the site manager uh, for Hartford HealthCare Rehabilitation Network. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I know thank this you. is going to be a popular topic. Um, who doesn't mm -hmm. have back pain or who hasn't experienced it at one point or another in their lives? I think I, I read eight out of ten people experience um, back pain. What are some of the common conditions really associated with, with back pain? Um, I would break down the common conditions probably into two categories. Mm -hmm. One would be the medical conditions, which could be anything from your muscle strains, um, to the joint problems, to disc problems, um, to problems with the, that involve the nerves as well in the, in the low back. Um, <clears throat> and then physical therapy related, I'd probably also categorize them uh, more into uh, a treatment uh, condition, which might be um, tightness or weakness um, or dysfunctional movement patterns. Those are more what we look at, look at in therapy. And there are so many treatment options robotically, um, speaking minimally invasively. There's been many advancements made on the surgical part of it. But you as a physical therapist, you're on the conservative side with mm -hmm. a lot of exercises and, and rehabilitation. And in a lot of cases, in many cases with back pain, that's what all you need, right? Sure. Yeah. The vast majority of low back pain is, is treated conservatively. Mm -hmm. um, a surgeon isn't going to want to do surgery on every back pain patient right. out there. They want to select the patients that are going to have the most success and if you can uh, manage your back pain or make it uh, go away with physical therapy or another conservative treatment then that's going to be uh, the treatment of choice uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. what, what, are, what do you see mostly um, in, in your practice and with your patients in terms of low back pain? What seems to be the most sort of common mm -hmm. culprit? Um, again you can sort of categorize into a few different things. Um, I'd say one is the insidious onset where I didn't do anything and, and my back started hurting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we've got to do some investigating and in physical therapy that's when we do our, our evaluation to try and figure that out. Um, so there's either something in their body that predisposed them to getting injured, mm -hmm. um, whether it's uh, something that's not moving well, um, joints or muscles, or it's core weakness when we're talking about the lumbar spine. Um, uh, or a lot of times it's ergonomics. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we sit on computers and desks all day. Yeah. I think we've seen images. Um, I've, I've heard people call it uh, what uh, a texting neck now. Yes. So their heads text are neck. the next mm -hmm. the text neck. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all sorts of things that factor in, and that's when getting good history um, sort of leads us uh, on our way to figure out what's going on and figuring out what's going on is how we figure out how to correct it. Yeah, and how do you do that? Take us through sort of the evaluation process when someone comes into you and they say, you know what, I have low back pain. Well, that could be almost really anything. So how do you sort of decipher, how do you, how do you get to the root cause? It can be almost anything. So um, at, as I just started to allude to, the, the first thing we do is take a good history. Um, getting a good history on how it started um, can be the vast majority of the evaluation that we might have a pretty good idea what's going on mm -hmm. just from that and then we confirm that by taking you through the uh, objective part of the, the test which is going to look at your flexibility, how you move, um, it'll look at your strength, range of motion. If nerves are involved we're going to check sensation and reflexes and do a good neurologic screen on that mm -hmm. um, and there might be special tests we do too that might target a specific um, tissue uh, that might be involved uh, you know, and we always want to clear certain things that might be more serious that we think um, kind of might need another look. A yep. little bit, yeah. Yep. Before Red flags you, before you go through. And and what what type of um, type of technology that you're utilizing now? I know there's been advancements in in the in the rehabilitation side of things, but what are some of the sort of um, key ways that you that you sort of diagnose and, and treat people? Um, probably the advancements and where um, where the research has taken us. Uh, probably involves more of that whole evaluation structure and the way we don't treat so much the medical diagnosis anymore. We could have 20 people with um, a bulging disc and they're not going to all need the same treatment. Um, there might be a trend with some of them, but at the same time, clinically, it's how they present. So the evidence really shows um, in physical therapy that you have to do this evaluation and that helps you guide your treatments 
uh, to what's going to be most successful for the patient. And I think that's so important too is to, to really have that evaluation process because um, I'm a back pain sufferer with a bulge disc and sometimes it's hard to articulate what exactly you're feeling, mm -hmm. what you're going through to, to someone like yourself. So I think that you know asking those pertinent questions and doing those necessary tests and in that evaluation is so crucial so that you know you can pinpoint what it is and then you know how to effectively treat it. It's very accurate. Without that evaluation, um, we're sort of just throwing darts at a dartboard and yeah. just guessing. Yeah, and especially um, exercise I know is very mm -hmm. important um, uh, to, to um, help with low back pain. Um, I know that to have a, a strengthened core is really kind of the foundation to prevent, you know, maybe back pain or some issues that you have. I know that that seems to work for me, but exercise is really critical. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of break exercises up into two broad categories. Mm -hmm. um, one would be stability exercises, mm -hmm. which work on strength um, for, for the weak areas. Mm -hmm. And the other is mobility exercises, which is taking something that's not moving well, tight areas, and stretching them out. So core strength is very important in the treatment of back pain, but strengthening a core for somebody who has mobility problems mm -hmm. isn't going to be as effective. Right. So what do you offer a patient like that then, um, who, where mobility is an issue and maybe they can't strengthen that core area? Um, so somebody like that, uh, they would start out with a healthy dose of uh, flexibility and stretching exercises, mm -hmm. um, maybe some hands-on techniques uh, if they're appropriate, to, if, it's a, if it's the spine that's not moving well, um, hands-on mobilization might be warranted. Um, sometimes it's the hips that aren't mm -hmm. moving well, which would uh, they get some good stretching exercises as well as some hands-on techniques as well. For spinal stenosis, that's another common condition that a lot of people suffer mm -hmm. with. Um, a lot of them have surgery for it. Is there a way to, um, for some patients who have spinal stenosis to treat that with exercise or does it almost always involve surgery? Um, no, there are definitely um, people with that condition that will respond uh, to, the man to conservative management. Um, the treatment of stenosis, though, it can be tricky because they're going to have limitations. It's one, of it, one thing is you can improve their function and their abilities. The other is to sort of teach them where their limits are mm -hmm. um, and what brings it on and how to avoid certain situations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to take more breaks. Um, if that's the problem. Long walks might be their, their biggest challenge. Can you slow the progression of spinal stenosis or, or um, any arthritic ailments that somebody might be experiencing in the lower spine area and the lower back area? Can you sort of slow the progression of certain um, issues or ailments? I do believe we can mm -hmm. slow down the cer certain um, progressions when mm -hmm. it comes to those degenerative changes. Mm -hmm. um, what's already occurred to the joint structures um, we're not going to really change that as much, what's mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we can't make them feel better. Um, I always tell, I tell my patients that um, your pain may go away, but if you have arthritis, that's still going to be there. That right. does, you don't get joint services um, uh, of you when you were 20 years younger. Mm -hmm. um, those are there, but mm -hmm. that's, you can make it so that uh, it's potentially less painful. Right. And, and uh, with, with folks exercising today and living longer, you're seeing more joint replacement surgeries and hips and knees, and I'm sure you're seeing a lot of folks coming in recovering from those types of surgeries. Oh, absolutely. Um, the post-operative mm -hmm. uh, joint replacements, uh, that's, it's big. There's a lot of them, and they're doing them even when they're younger sometimes yeah. because they last longer than right. they used to. Right, right. Yeah, there's so much, uh, so many advancements made mm. with, um, and there was a lot of robotic technology, um, minimally invasive um, surgical procedures, and now it's, you know, patients are up the same day um, walking <laughs> after having a hip or knee replacement surgery, so that's, that's great. We are talking with Dan Fisher. He's a physical therapist, also site manager for Hartford Healthcare Rehabilitation Network. We encourage you to ask Dan a question. Um, we know back pain is such a common condition that affects um, at least out of eight out of ten people, so it is a common, common problem. What do you want to say to somebody out there who might be watching that you know, maybe has an ache or a pain in their lower back, maybe who hasn't been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, but just a common ailment of an achy lower back, lower back pain, what, what would you say to folks out there that might fit that category? Um, that, that's somebody who I think makes for a great candidate for physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, 
it can be as simple as just a visit or two to educate. Uh, you know, if it's not debilitating, not something they, that they want to spend the next three months in therapy for, but they're just looking for some answers, right. um, some potential things they can do to stop things from getting worse, or might be wondering why they're having the pain that they are. Um, so just having that consult of the evaluation can be beneficial. That's, yeah. Do you find that a lot of patients um, just live with the pain? And you know, you hear about this all the time. I, I've talked to several patients who have, knee, have who have had knee replacements or hip replacement surgery, and they all say the same thing. Like I've I just have learned to live with it because they don't want surgery mm -hmm. or they don't want to go to physical therapy or they don't finish physical therapy, and that's really important too because to really seek the benefits. Um, it's important to go through the entire process, but do you find that people either skip out on it because they don't, just don't have time or they don't want to be bothered? And that's such an important step. <clears throat> For so many reasons, mm -hmm. um, people don't do it. And yeah. uh, it, it's time, it's high deductibles, there's all sorts of things that factor into why people yeah. don't. Um, you almost have to look at it more if you, especially when it comes to the deductibles, a little bit now, can save you more later by right. really handling this before it gets out of control. Because people do tolerate it, and if they tolerate it for years, and then things may progress to the point where it's a lot harder to handle and you're gonna be going for more therapy yeah. to try and adjust the situation versus something that might have been a much easier fix early on. Right, right, absolutely. So we have a question. Uh, Carol wants mm -hmm. to know, I had my first back issue um, at age 33. My back has been fine ever since. I am now 55. What can I do to maintain back health moving forward? Uh, it's a great question, the fact that you've been doing well and if you're not having pain now, that's great. Um, maintaining flexibility and strength are mm -hmm. probably the two things, Carol, that you can do um, as preventative measures. Um, those two things right there, you know, tightness can, can cause problems in the back and wear and tear and weakness can too. So right. a, a good mix of those two things. If you're, a, if, if you're a younger person too, maintaining that health, what, what, should, what would you say to younger folks out there um, right now who, uh, who can prevent, you know, back issues later on, um, what would you say to them? Um, sometimes it's harder with, the, with younger mm -hmm. uh, people because when things don't hurt, you don't tend to make changes. Right. Um, when I was in PT school for, for a few years, you study with your neck in a position mm -hmm. and your neck gets sore. And when you get older, you start to pay for some of those things. So good body mechanics, mm -hmm. good posture, and exercise are, you know, all those combinations of things will give you the greatest chance of limiting what you may have later in life. Yeah, and I think really that's important, and you touched upon this, is to address it now, even though it might not be a big deal, and I think that's where some folks say, well, it's not really bothering mm -hmm. me, I can live with it, I can deal with it, so they choose to ignore it, but it can just essentially get worse over time. It can, and that's where I think, you know, having that discussion with your doctor, you can be referred to therapy for you know, a very small amount of visits. It doesn't have to be in a really extensive treatment plan, especially if it's, if it's minor. It's just come in, hey, what can I do to prevent this from worsening? What kind of things do you see? And depending on the evaluation, we might find that it's, uh, that it's not a whole lot that needs to be addressed. Okay, we have a question from Nita. She asks, uh, what happens to us with Harrington rods in our backs that have been fused? Um, that adds more complications. So you're talking about now there's somebody with a fusion and with Harrington rods, you probably have a pretty good amount of your spine that's fused. Um, so you're, you have an inherent mobility issue, but that's not a mobility issue that I'm gonna be able to fix. So we have to take things back into that scope and try and, and do the best we can with what you still have. Um, one of the big things when it comes to low back is making sure your hips are moving well and strong. Um, you can still strengthen the core, um, so we really will we work around it and and like I said do the best with what you still have that you can still do sure what about for those athletes out there who are you know we just uh, saw um, the, the Boston Marathon runners you know a few days ago on Monday you know 26.2 miles um, you know what do you say to, to athletes out there to um, you know who are putting a lot of strain on their muscles and their joints and to try to keep them healthy going forward um, <coughs> Specifically for the athletes, now if you're talking to somebody who doesn't have pain, 
Um, there's actually a good tool that uh, some of our offices um, have and can utilize called the FMS, which is the Functional Movement Screen. This allows us to, it's just a screen, so it doesn't diagnose anything, it doesn't um, tell you more information than is this person have a higher rate of injury with sport. Um, and it's something that uh, has evidence behind it that if you score at a certain level, um, you're more prone to injury. Um, and it takes, it's, it's seven tests that basically look at how you move in different ways and it picks out those mobility dysfunctions as well as weakness. And that's probably good for you because you can really map out a detailed treatment plan based on the results of that test, right? Um, true. That test is a little more specific. It should be more, it's more effectively used with people that don't have pain. Mm -hmm. So with patients, there's a different version of it mm -hmm. um, called the SFMA, which is a different, it's a movement assessment as opposed mm -hmm. to a screen, um, but along the same ideas. And that's more for the, the patient that comes in um, with pain. We should mention that Dan Fisher is going to be um, co-hosting a community education class uh, next week, I believe April 24th mm -hmm. in Southington um, with Dr. Almadi Hussein. Um, he's going to be talking sort of about the, the real clinical honing in on the surgical aspects. There's a, a lot of um, robotic procedures now that are available um, for low back pain, for hip replacements, knee replacements, and you're really going to kind of go into the physical therapy part mm -hmm. of it. Can you kind of give folks watching now just a preview of what you're going to touch upon? Sure. I'm going to talk about um, low back pain and, and sort of function in general. Um, I'll go into what to expect if you, if you do come for therapy, what that evaluation procedure is like, and, and the different options where that can guide us. Um, for different treatments um, and where the evidence shows that it's most effective. Um, that's sort of that's mm -hmm. the crux of what I'm going to be talking about in the physical therapy. Prior, prior to someone coming to see you, what should uh, patients, how should they prepare um, f to start their mm -hmm. physical therapy? Um, well, so first uh, you do need a, a referral, referral from a physician. Mm -hmm. um, so once you have that, you just call up our office and uh, they'll get you scheduled for that evaluation. Um, any questions on what you need to do, they can take you through that. In general, we t ask you to try and wear comfortable clothing because you're going to move around. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to just sit there, um, and it makes that a little bit easier. How can, how can folks really get the most out of physical therapy where they're not just like, oh, this isn't helping, or I, I think I'm just going to skip the last three sessions? How, how, what, what do you say to them to really... Um, to, to say, you know what, this really works, and you really need to stick it out to, to maximize the full potential mm -hmm. of healing. <clears throat> um, that kind of falls on us mm -hmm. as therapists, mm -hmm. to really make sure that we're engaging the patients. Mm -hmm. um, we have to make sure that you understand that there's so much we can do, mm -hmm. um, but if you leave our office and you, you're not compliant with your exercise program or um, anything we've instructed you to, um, and then it's really not going to be effective. Mm -hmm. um, it, we're teachers, and so I'm going to do everything I can. There's some things I'll do with you in the clinic that can help, but after that, you're out my doors, and you know we need you doing the right things for your spine as well. Right. Yeah. It's it's a 50/50 partnership. You know, you're doing your part, but you need the patient mm -hmm. to do their part as well to really uh, reap the benefits of it. Yes. And do you find that if they do that? the less chance of them likely to come back in the future with this same issue? Oh, absolutely. I would say, one, as therapists, one of the biggest things uh, we hear when we see somebody as a repeat customer for the, the same thing, maybe a year later, mm -hmm. um, I was feeling fine. <laughs> And then they say that they stopped doing their exercise. Right. So It's so critical. Well, Dan, thank you for uh, spending some time with us tonight. I'm sure you've helped many folks out there. And we do appreciate you um, spending a few minutes with us. And, of course, as always, thank you for joining us. Don't forget, Dan is um, co-presenting a class um, coming up next week on April 24th with Dr. Almadi Hussein um, on how to treat back pain. So he'll talk about the clinical surgical side of it, and Dan will talk about the physical therapy, the post-surgical side of it. So all bases will be covered. And thank you once again for joining us. I'm Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona. We'll see you back here next week.